Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, I'm so excited because you see, when truth is coming, remember what Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So when truth is coming to you, it is proclaiming your liberty. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we find the liberty and release our faith to make demand for our daily bread? It's a right that God has given to us. So are you ready? Join me now as we declare. Say, Father, I demand today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about um, the true light. I read from John chapter 8 and verse 12. Jesus speaking there. He says, I am the light of the world. And I've been telling you that it simply means without him, everything is in darkness take jesus out the whole world is in darkness now when i mean darkness we're not saying black like night see that now we are saying now darkness is not just about um, the absence of physical light that you know darkness can be the lack of knowledge see that now the lack of idea so i'm just in the dark and when someone says i'm just I'm just walking in the dark. He's not telling you that they've switched off all the lights. He's telling you that he doesn't have insight about what he is doing. So when Jesus said, I am the light, don't start looking at the sunlight. Maybe God's going to remove the sun. You know, like, like the book of Revelation say, he will be the, the light of that city. And one is thinking, hmm, maybe God is going to put off the sun. Or some people say the sun is burning. So a day will come when the sun will finish burning and it will go off. Then Jesus will now become the new sun. No, that's not what he's saying. He's saying it is through Jesus that the, the city will be illuminated. Illuminated how? Everything done in that city shall be done with the light or through Jesus. When you say through Jesus, through his word, praise God, through his word. Now, you remember where we just read in John chapter 8, the story before Jesus made this statement was the story the, the Pharisees brought this woman caught in the act of adultery to him. And then they said to him, we caught this woman in the very act of adultery. So there is no, nothing like someone came to report her to us. No, no, we caught her in the very act. And Jesus now says, the law, no, no, the, the, the Pharisees now say, the law demands that we stone her to death. So according to the law, she is supposed to be stoned to death. Then they ask Jesus, what do you say? Now, they brought this matter before Jesus. And they said, according to the light that they have, she is supposed to be stoned to death. Now, that's the light they have. And then they brought her to Jesus and said, what do you say? Meaning, what are you going to tell us according to your light? Is your light the same with the light of the law? Or... Are you going to say something different? Now, even though they brought the matter to Jesus to tempt him, they felt they've gotten a good opportunity to trap Jesus. Now, that's to tell you the Pharisees, they were always listening to the teachings of Jesus. Yeah, because you, you need to understand the teachings of Jesus to say, okay, I think this kind of situation will be able to trap him. We will trap him by his teachings. He preaches love, forgiveness, and, and that's what Jesus preaches. Now, the law is very clear on this matter. Anyone caught in the act of adultery should be stoned to death. His teachings suggest 
that you know we forgive people even when they wrong us so this is a clear opportunity to make him fault where his teaching is concerned now that was what they were thinking they brought the matter to jesus and you know the story jesus started writing on the floor and then later he raised up his head and all he said was anyone without sin among you should cast the first stone and they all left so he turned to the woman he says woman where are your accusers has no one been able to accuse you condemn you she said no no one he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more now the jesus i want you to follow me carefully the jesus just exonerate this woman that committed adultery did jesus just say Adultery doesn't matter. You see, now you expect Jesus, even if you wanted to forgive her, you expect Jesus to take her through some counseling session. You know, you know what I'm talking about? You expect Jesus to do all that. Now, but he just said to her, I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. Oh, so everybody that commits adultery, now nobody should condemn them because Jesus did not condemn, according to the scripture, Jesus did not condemn the person that was brought to him that committed the act of adultery. So nobody should condemn anyone that commit adultery anymore. Is that right? Is that okay? Now, you see, this is, this is where people go wrong, lacking understanding. So they take something like this and they want to amplify it to suit their purpose. Now, I took this matter before the Lord sincerely. You know, I, I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, because now things like this get to me. How does it get to me? Not because I'm thinking, at least this woman should have received some punishment. At least, you know, Jesus would have dealt with her, you know, somehow. You know, that kind of a thing. You can't just say, go and sin no more. Just walk free like that. So, so I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, this action of yours you know i need to understand why did you take this action of yours and i was amazed by what he told me and it boils down to what he now said you see that's why i'm bringing these things so sometimes when we teach we are not just teaching something we just studied we are teaching something we've had a relationship with him about and based on that relationship we have learned something and that's what we teach by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the, I just feel the way you sent this lady away. Um, is that the same thing you would do for every situation like this? That was my question before him. And when you ask the Lord things like that, it's not all the time he answers you speedily or he tells you the answer immediately. Sometimes it will take a while, but then he will surely answer. Now, that's my experience with him. So I asked the Lord this, and the Lord spoke to me and said, let me, let me tell you about the woman caught in the act of adultery. He said, that woman was not an adulterous woman. I was like, how? Now, this is what the Lord told me. So don't start telling me, show us in the Bible. Praise <laughs> God. This is what the Lord told me. And, and he said, hey, Monsieur, why, why, why should I? I'm giving you my testimony. So it's left for you to believe my testimony. And it's left for him to prove if my testimony is true or false. That's my testimony. And I will not lie. If he has told me something, I cannot say he did not tell me. Praise God. So the Lord told me that that woman is, was not an adulterous woman. Like, how is she not that? They caught her in the very act. And then the Lord said this to me. He said, they all, including her husband, planned that whole thing. So they set her up to fall into the act of adultery. Now, that's something that was not just one day thing. They had planned this thing. And, and you know, let me give you what I quite understood. More like, okay, a husband is looking for how to, you know, send his wife away. And he just felt, okay, you know what? Let me uh, put her in a tight situation so that it will be her fault. Then I can now send her. Well, more likely even get her killed. So they plotted this thing and she fell right into it because she was naive. 
Yeah, that's what happened. She fell right into it. And so that's why they were there to catch her in the very act. It's not because they stumbled on her. It's because, I'm telling you about this particular situation and what the Lord told me. So they, they planned this thing. So that's why they got her. See that now? But to justify themselves, they said, let them use this opportunity to tempt Jesus. Unknown to them, God, walking behind the scene, was walking out, Ayegabasaya, was walking out a way to save this woman from their trouble. You know that now, now imagine if Jesus had said, Go and stone her there. You see that now? Now they would have said, Oh, they would have accused Jesus, and yet they would have done what they wanted to do. But Jesus spoke those words and it pierced their hearts. And one after the other, they began to leave until they all left. And Jesus said, woman, where are your accusers? Has no one been able to condemn you? Because when Jesus said, anyone without sin should cast the first stone. The first sin that came to their mind was this conspiracy that they just did against the woman. So it wasn't because they were thinking, mm, me, me, me have committed adultery too. Let me just go. Or I may have told you like I have told. No, it was the conspiracy. Jesus knew about their conspiracy against the woman. So when he said that, you know how they began to look at themselves. And nobody can form I'm, I'm holy because they all did this thing together. <laughs> they conspired together and they knew it was wrong. So that was the scene that convicted them at that moment. And they all left the woman at the door. You see that now? Now, in the eyes of the law, according to the light of the law, she was stuck. You see? She was stuck. Whether they plotted against her or not, whether she did it on her own volition or not, whether she was forced into that situation or not, the law doesn't give that variation. The law states, were you caught in the act of adultery? Yes. You know, no explanation. It's not really adultery. It's not because I was, I'm not that kind of a person. No, the law doesn't do that. The law is one, two, three is equals to this. But Jesus brought that matter under his light. Now, his light, because that's what he now said. I am the light of the world. Anyone who doesn't follow me will walk in darkness. That's exactly the opposite of what he said. Because he that follows me will not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So that means anyone who doesn't follow me will surely be walking in darkness. Imagine how many people have been killed in darkness. Are you listening to me now? How many have been maimed? How many have been destroyed because of darkness? How many people have been cheated? The same thing with life today. How many people have been cheated? How many people have been convicted even though they were innocent, but the facts spoke against them? Because there was no true light to judge that particular situation. Brothers and sisters, when we tell you, listen, whatever you are doing, make sure you are doing it under the true light. This is the reason. You don't want to take, you don't want to be a judge, a court, a, a court judge that will sentence an innocent person to death and only to discover 20 years later that that person was actually innocent, but they've, been, they've killed the person already. You don't want that. So that's the reason it is so important that you do everything, take every decision that you want to take under the true light. And that is Jesus. How do I bring this thing under Jesus? Jesus speaks. Have you asked him, Lord Jesus, what do you think about this situation? I need your input to make this decision. So what do you think? As a judge, 
before you take that final decision, even though the facts are very obvious before you. Before you take that, you know, sometimes people say everything, everything is black and white. No, it's not so. When you say black and white, the next thing you need to ask is under which light? Because something that is black and white under this light can be a, a, with a different color under another light. Life itself is not that straightforward. I'm telling you the truth. The fact that it happened to A doesn't mean the same thing will happen to B under the same condition. No, there are certain variables that make the conditions to differ in details when you look at it. They may look like the same condition, but there are certain variables that affect those conditions in details that makes it different. But you just want to be sure that you are taking this decision under the true light. And so what do you do before you take the decision? No matter the fact that is before you, you go before the Lord and say, Lord, I need your help. I need to see this thing through your light. How do you see this matter? And I'll tell you from experience, by the time the Lord begins to open it up, there are people you've had come around you. They look like friends. They look like they love you. They look like they are willing to do anything to you. Hey, hold on. You need to search them out through the true light. Because some of those people will turn out to be like the Bible says, reverend wolves. They just seek after your destruction. And sometimes when God begins to tell you, don't, don't, don't do business with this person. Or God begins to tell you, oh, don't get into a relationship with this person. He is telling you under his light. Now, under your light, it may look okay. I've waited enough. I mean, this one opportunity, I've got it. I've got to grab it. Now, that's under your light. Do you know what Jesus is seeing? See that now? Do you know what Jesus is seeing? under his light. So would you be humble enough to bring that matter before him and let him shine his light on it? His light is the true light. His light is the true light. If he tells you that thing is not going to work, I'm telling you the truth. Even if you keep it for 50, 100 years, you will only realize afterwards that you have wasted your time. It doesn't matter how right it looks. It doesn't matter how right it sounds today. Brothers and sisters, if it is not right under his light, it is in darkness. And I'm bringing this teaching to you so you will learn to separate yourself from darkness and that you begin to live in the light. Sometimes the light may not look like what you want. Sometimes the light may not look exactly like what you thought was the perfect thing. But all you need to do is to measure it under his light. If his light tells you that's what you should choose, then with boldness, believing in him, choose it. You see that now? Because he is telling you according to what is true. And you know how life is truth is truth. If you delay it from now till 50 years, it will still be true. But a lie will eventually change, no matter how you quote it. Praise God. Our time is up for today. Hey, I pray, I pray sincerely for you that the light of Jesus will shine deeply on everything that concerns you and that you will begin to take decisions based on the evidence that his light is bringing before you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.